My name is Danielle Procopio, and I am Shepherd's Corporate Director of Marketing, Sales, and Communication, as well as a member of the Valley Legacy Awards Advisory Board. Each year since 2005, the Valley Legacy Awards have honored civic-minded seniors and senior advocates for their dedication to the Mahoning Valley. Today, we gather to recognize individuals whose lives exemplify a spirit of service and dedication to our Valley. On behalf of the Valley Advisory Board, I would like to congratulate each of the nominees for sharing their time and talents for the betterment of the Mahoning Valley. Most importantly, I would like to thank them for a lifetime of caring and commitment. I would also like to take a moment to give a special thank you to all the sponsors who made today's event possible. Please stand when you are recognized. Our platinum sponsors, Blue Sky Therapy, Huntington Bank, Jet Creative, Chemical Bank, Life Fleet Ambulance, Comdoc, WFMJ TV21, and iHeartMedia. Our diamond sponsors, Farmers National Bank and Home Instead Senior Care. Our gold sponsors, Armstrong Cable, Attorney Diane Chermley, Grace Hospice, and Respiratory Care Partners. Our silver sponsors, Family Recovery Center, Lane and Burke, Lane Family Funeral Home, Lippy Group, Warren Autologic Group, the Putt-Putt Fund Center of Warren, and 717 Credit Union. We would also like to thank silver sponsor Armstrong Cable for televising today's awards on their community channel. We are thankful for all of our sponsors' generosity. We would not be able to continue this event without your support. Please give them all a round of applause. I would also like to thank the Valley Legacy Awards Advisory Committee. If you would please stand when I call your name. Christine Bridgens, Attorney Charlene Burke, Kathy Fines, Zonda Haas, Katie Lou Harriman, June Jagunik, Anna Keck, Kay Lavelle, Robert Marino, Amy McLandrick, Tony Perone, Barbara Kataya, Wally Sin, Kristen Taylor, Denise Combo Williams, Eloise Trena, and William Wade. We appreciate all the time and effort you have so graciously volunteered to help with today's event. Thank you guys so very much. At this time, we are pleased to welcome back as this year's MC, Leslie Barrett, WFMJ's weeknight co-anchor and reporter. Leslie joined 21 News in 2011, which is only appropriate as she first became interested in broadcasting after job shadowing at WFMJ TV while she was still in high school. She covered the 2016 and 2012 Democratic and Republican National Conventions. Leslie has received Associated Press Awards for her anchoring and reporting skills. She grew up in New Wilmington and graduated from the University of Dayton. Leslie lives in the Mahoning Valley with her husband, Eric, and their daughter, Clara. Please join me in welcoming Leslie to the stage. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's such an honor to be here again. I am so inspired and motivated by all of you and your service to the Valley. Every time I get a little boost and a little energy to be like, I, you know, I need to give back. I don't know how you do it with your professional lives and then also find the time to volunteer. And so it is thank you so much for all that you do to make the Mahoning Valley a better place to live and for inspiring us, the younger generations who are coming up. So I want to welcome you to this year's Valley Legacy Awards. Today, we honor the 2017 class of Valley Legacy Award nominees for Outstanding Senior and Outstanding Advocate for Seniors. Each of our nominees has used their time and special talents to make the Mahoning Valley a better place to live. Throughout their lives, the people we honor today saw needs in their communities and worked to fulfill them. Some helped to meet the most basic of needs by volunteering at food banks, providing affordable housing and health care, or developing programs that promote our personal safety. Many of our nominees put their faith in action by serving in multiple volunteer roles at their local churches. They honor and care for those who have fought for our country on foreign shores, bring smiles to the faces of those who are hospitalized, and support to those who are battling the disease of addiction. 
Our communities are enhanced because of their volunteerism with civic and cultural organizations. Everything they do has in some way eased the burden faced by another, and their actions have brought happiness and comfort to so many. Shepherd of Lovely has been the proud to be the presenting sponsor of the Valley Legacy Awards since their inception in 2005. At this time, I would like to welcome, welcome Tony Amator, President of Shepherd of the Valley's Board of Directors. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Tony Emator, and I serve as the president of the board of directors for Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Services. On behalf of uh, those we serve, the members of the board, the staff, and the family of Shepherd of the Valley, I would like to extend a warm welcome to the 13th annual Valley Legacy Awards. In 2005, the Legacy Awards were created to honor those who devoted to improving the Mahoning Valley. Since then, the Valley Legacy Awards have honored more than 300 exceptional people and organizations, with 65 receiving the Valley Legacy Award. This year, we are recognizing another group of civic-minded seniors and senior advocates from across the Valley whose lives exemplify a spirit of service and dedication to the seniors of our world. It's been a privilege to be part of the process that recognizes individuals who have spent a lifetime contributing to our communities and those who have contributed to the improvement of our seniors' lifestyles through their professional, volunteer, or civic roles. As I reviewed the backgrounds of the nominees this year, I'm overwhelmed by the talent, generosity, and commitment that surrounds us today. Some of our nominees are themselves seniors who have achievements of their own. Others work in the community. And yet we have others that are actively engaged in advocacy for our seniors. Overall, our, our nominees are a diverse group of dedicated individuals united by the desire to serve others to make the Valley a better place, not only for our seniors, but for all of us. On behalf of Shepherd of the Valley's Board of Directors, I would like to offer both our admiration and thanks to all this year's awards, Legacy Awards nominees. In addition, I would also like to congratulate those individuals who this will be their first year as a Valley Legacy Award recipient. You have all left a lasting, lasting legacy in our community by inspiring others through your work ethic, concern for others, and through your contributions to our community. I would like to thank our sponsors, more than 25 individuals, organizations, and corporations who have generously supported this ceremony and recognition efforts. We couldn't do this program without you. I thank you for your nominees, friends, family, and staff and sponsors for joining us today. I, at this time, would like to ask Shepherd of the Valley's pastor, David Barnes, to lead us in prayer before we begin lunch. Thank you very much. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us be at prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are humbled by the very thought of you, and you've blessed us with a day that is special in so many ways. This day we celebrate the lives of those among us, Lord, that exemplify excellence and service. And so we pray a blessing upon them we thank you, Lord, for this time together to honor them and their accomplishments. And so, Father, we pray your blessing upon our fellowship. For the opportunity to gather around common tables and share in a meal, we do give you thanks. And we pray your blessing be upon the food. Hear all these prayers, for we ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm Danielle Procopio, and I am the Corporate Director of Marketing, Sales, and Communication at Shepherd of the Valley. 
The Valley Legacy Award started in 2005. Since then, we've recognized more than 350 individuals as Valley Legacy nominees, and we've had more than 75 people actually win the award. So it's been a really great way for us to recognize not only the legacies that seniors leave in our community, but recognize individuals that take the time to advocate for those seniors as well. My name is Christine Bridgens and I'm a licensed social worker and the program director at the Gerard Multi-Generational Center. I think it's absolutely wonderful because I mean especially being a social worker there's not a lot of accolades that go with that. For me it's just knowing that I have helped somebody, the gratitude in someone's face when I know that I've done something for them. So when the Valley Legacy honors people I just think it's really um, amazing that you know you get that extra basically thank you and you know we've seen what you've done and we appreciate it so I think it's just quite an honor. The Valley Legacy Award in a lot of ways is a capstone to take the time you know every October and to recognize those seniors that have given so much to make the Mahoning Valley a better place you know our community is what it is because of these people. My name is Robert Marino Sr. Uh, from Niles, Ohio, I'm involved with a lot of veterans organizations, the AMVETS, the VFW, American Legion, 40 and 8, and the DAV. I've received a lot of awards in my lifetime, and the two most precious awards that I received was one, I was inducted into our Hall of Fame at Niles, and the second one was the Valley Legacy Award because they honor you for things that you have done to try to make the community better for everybody. And, and that, that's why I think it's important. You honor people that try to make it better. And I was humbled by it, I was. I think it's a, it's a very uh, prestigious award. On behalf of Shepherd of the Valley and all of the Valley Legacy Committee, I want to thank everyone who's been involved with our event to make it a continued success. Most importantly, all of our nominees. We are here today for all of you uh, to thank you for all of the greatness that you've brought to the Valley. Um, additionally, to all of our past award winners and our future award winners, thank you so much for all that you've done. We're excited to recognize you today. And of course, we want to thank all of our sponsors. Um, it's critical that we have your support in order to pull off this event. So thank you for your continued support and and we are so glad to have everyone here with us today. And now it's time to recognize our nominees. In 2005, the Valley Legacy Awards were created to honor those who helped build our valley and to recognize the good deeds of those who work with our senior population. Presenting sponsor, Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Retirement Services has long been an active advocate for seniors. Through the support of the numerous event sponsors, the Valley Legacy Awards thank those who have spent their lives building companies, raising families, and volunteering their time to make the Valley a better place to live. In 2010, the Valley Legacy Awards Advisory Board created the Cliff Johnson Valley Legacy Memorial Award for timeless service to the community. The award, selected by the Advisory Board, honors the memory of exceptional seniors. I would like to invite Valley Legacy Awards Advisory Board member Katie Lou Harriman to present this award. I'm very pleased to be able to uh, present this award. I knew both Cliff and Lily from Warren uh, for many years, and they were wonderful, wonderful people. Cliff and Lily Johnson were a Valley Legacy Award board members and outstanding members of our community. They were extremely active through many organizations in making life better for others. Both were educators, community activists, mentors, and friends to many causes. As a couple, they won the Valley Legacy for Outstanding Senior in 2008. Both served on the Valley Legacy Committee following that award. At Cliff's passing in 2010, 
the award was set up to further honor his selfless work. Following Willie's passing in April of this year, the committee voted to rename the award to honor both the Johnsons, whose service was beyond exclamatory and their love enduring. Cliff and Lily left a legacy in the Mahoney Valley, and it is in the spirit that we recognize this year's Cliff and Lily Johnson Memorial Award for timeless service to the community recipient, Richard Dick Orwig. Mr. Orwig was born September 21st, 1925 in Holland Township, the son of James and Eleanor Llewellyn Orwig. He attended school in Holland, graduating in 1943 from the high school where he played football and ran track. After high school, Dick served the United States Army for three years during World War II, attaining the rank of Master Sergeant. He was stationed in Iwo Jima, Saipan, Penn, and Okinawa. He received the American Theater Ribbon the Asiatic Pacific Theater Ribbon, the Materias Unit Award, and the World War II Victory Medal. He was a 64-year member of the American Legion and past president of the American Legion Post 700 in Holland. He felt fortunate to marry the love of his life, the farmer Jean Fisher, in 1944. Both were lifetime members of the Holland Community Church. They shared 62 years of marriage until Jean's passing, Jean's passing in 2006. After returning home from active service, Dick worked at Central Lumber Company in Niles. In 1954, he started his own business as a cabinet maker in Helen and continued to operate it until he retired in 2004. He was one of the co-founders of the Holland Athletic Club in 1954. He successfully managed the club for five years, then took stints as president and became a lifetime trustee over the course of his 40-year membership. Education was very important to Dick. He got involved with the Holland School District in 1962 when elected to the Holland Board of Education. He served the board for 16 years, 12 years as a board president. Ever a hometown boy at heart, he was affectionately known as Mr. Holland. Dick was elected to the Helen Township Board of Trustees in 1978 and served as a trustee for 32 years. He was elected chairman of the trustees more than half of those years. He was honored as Holland's first man of the year and was a member of the first class of the Holland Achievement Hall of Fame, as well as Scope Society of Honors. In addition, the town named the park on East Market Street, the Richard E. Orwick Gazebo Park. Dick was a member of the Trumbull County Trustee Association and was chairman of that organization for over 15 years. He also formerly on the Township Board of Zoning Appeals. Accepting this award on behalf of the Orwick family is Dick's daughter, Pam Bixler, and his son, Tom. We are proud to present this year's Cliff and Lily Johnson Award to timeless service in the committee with Patty and Tom. Congratulations. Want to say something? It's not written down. You want to say something? I don't know what to say. I, when the gal called me, I just started to cry. I mean, to be remembered and given such an honor four years after your death is unbelievable. I mean, my dad said from the time I was a little girl, he was going to make the Orwig name something to be really proud of, and he has. And thank you all for this honor, and thank you for all you do. It's it's wonderful to see so many people here who donate their time and energy, especially for the seniors, especially now that I'm a senior.
And now we would like to ask at this time all of the nominees to join us next to the stage. So if you've not already come up, please do so right here to my right of the stage. We would like to recognize the past senior recipients and nominees in attendance this afternoon. Please stand so that we may thank you again for your generosity and volunteerism. Please stand. Now it's time to recognize this year's nominees. Please welcome back Tony Amator to the stage. He will be joined by Shepherd of the Valley's Executive Director, Richard Lamange, to present our nominees with a Certificate of Achievement, recognizing the impact they've had on those who nominated them and in the Mahoning Valley. We had 27 individuals nominated for this year's Valley Legacy Outstanding Senior Award. Now this is more than double the number of nominees from last year. So we're gonna keep this up, remember, for next year too, <laughs> to remember the people who have done great works in the Valley. So the award is split into two categories, community achievement and professional excellence. Requirements include demonstration of a lifelong involvement in, in and support for the Valley through professional, volunteer, or civic roles. We had five nominations for the Valley Legacy Outstanding Senior Advocate Award. Requirements for this award emphasize demonstrating an exceptional effort to assist seniors and enthusiasm for the betterment of the community. All nominees will be recognized in alphabetical order. Each nominee was invited to give us some juicy details about themselves that their nominators might not have known. Our take on who we are is often funny, touching, or endearing. As I say your name, please come to the stage to be recognized. Please hold your applause until after all of our nominees have been recognized, and at that time, we'll give them a round of applause. Mark Cole. Nominated for Outstanding Senior Advocate. Mark has really enjoyed working with seniors through the Generational Enrichment Corporation. He gets joy and also a lot of giggles as he tries to help them work through the foreign lands of cell phones and computers. He says often their interpretation of the new words just crack him up, <laughs> definitely. Roberta Sikon, nominated for Outstanding Senior Advocate. It may surprise you to learn that Roberta has donned the persona of Pete the Penguin at YSU events, representing Batante College of Health and Human Services, and that her photo hangs in the Quaker Stake and Lube in Cortland, Ohio, as the winner of the Tiara Magazine Inspirational Woman of the Year. Elder George Dial, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Professional Excellence. Everyone has a passion in their heart and mind for something they really want to do. Elder Dial's passion is creating soul food. His food comes from fresh, homegrown sources that become tasty soul food dishes appealing to the eye and the palate. William Bill Farragher, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. How's this for timing? While serving in the Army in World War II, Bill got pneumonia, causing him to need some rehabilitation. His doctor in rehab just happened to be from Youngstown. Many years later, he met a beautiful young lady that he decided to make his bride. Can you guess who her father was? That's right, the Army rehab doc. <laughs> Mary Fuller nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Mary says she first met Jim Fuller on a blind date. They became high school sweethearts in the W.G. Harding class of 1957 and got married and were together for 53 and a half years. Her career as a teacher was inspired by second grade teacher Irma Hout. 
she later had the privilege of teaching alongside her mentor. Ned Gold, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Ned's passion for giving through volunteering has been rooted in Boy Scouts. As the representative from the Great Trail Council to the National Boy Scout Council, he's one of only 10 men in the 75-year history of Philmont Scout Ranch where national and international jamborees are held every four years to receive the Men Who Matter Award. Margaret Ol Grace, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Although she was mostly retired from Habitat for Humanity at the time, she was casually invited to their summer picnic only to be completely surprised to receive a Lifetime Achievement Award. She says she fought back tears of happiness while they all laughed and clapped, celebrating her big surprise. Hazel Howell, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. She says, for 20 years, I taught vacation Bible school. One little boy in one of the classes asked me how old I was. Before I could answer, another little boy said, she's older than my grandma that died years ago. <laughs> Being dubbed that old did not stop her from traveling to 47 of the United States and visiting Canada, Mexico, and Scotland. Sister Charlotte Italiano, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Sister Charlotte has been an Ursuline sister for 62 years. She has helped six Model Cities women, ages 40 to 65, find employment. Her greatest love has been working with grandparents who have custody of school-aged children, helping them know how to deal with the kids who are without hands-on parents. Raymond Jaminette, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. With 10 children, Ray's life has been intertwined with sports, most notably football and baseball at every age level. When he has moments to himself, he enjoys gardening and working on his prized and elaborate Lionel train layouts. He also spends time improving his golf game, and get this, he can claim three holes in one. Quite a feat. Oops. It's great to just get one hole in one, let alone three. Sarah Janitulo, outstanding senior for community achievement. We often hear of high school sweethearts who are together forever after. Sarah's would be husband knew he was going to marry her as early as sixth grade. One day, as she went walking by him, Ben told a bunny, that's the girl I'm going to marry. And 64 years later, here they are, still sharing their happily ever after. So sweet. James F. Kerr, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. As a lover of nature, Jim has collected many specimens. Using these, he and wife Rebecca have brought the outdoors in for area seniors. While he tells the stories, she takes the specimens around to listeners so they can look and touch them. Some are very willing for the experience. Others shoo her away, unwilling to come in contact. <laughs> Mark and Trish Ludwig, nominated for Outstanding Senior Advocate. Beyond owning the senior news, Mark's passions include ham radio operation and his Mini Cooper. Trish has an extensive background in hospitality management, having owned several restaurants. They've been married for over 10 years. Trish teases that introducing Mark to sweet tea and biscuits and gravy prompted his marriage proposal. <laughs> Carol Massey, 
nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Some say home is where the heart is. While in training for the new Middletown Rescue Squad and Fire Department, Carol found herself in the ER of Salem Hospital when a man walked in with a lot of blood running from his head. When questioned, he said his wife hit him with an iron skillet. After being cleaned up, the man paid his bill and left to go back home. <laughs> Marianne McMahon, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. As a teacher, we were required to expose students to various ethnic groups. She says that she chose the local Amish. The children were very excited to learn about them. At about the same time, she held a St. Patrick's Day party to celebrate her own Irish heritage. After one weekend, a student announced that she'd seen her people, my people, the Irish, and then described Amish women. I quickly clarified between the two groups, she says. Now my friends will invite me to Amish country with this call. Hey, Mary Ann, want to go see your people this weekend? <laughs> Emma Blackstone Moore, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Emma has had quite a long love affair with aquatics. Not only has she taught hundreds of children and, children and adults to swim at all levels, but she has won many awards for her service. Something you may not know about her is that she's also a member of the Mahoning County Polar Bear Club. <laughs> Carl Nunziato, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Carl is not able to be here today. Accepting his nomination is his nominator, Charlene Burke. As a veteran of the Vietnam War, Carl was inspired by his own experiences in the military and became determined to make the best of his own circumstances, as well as to assist other vets and disabled persons. He co-founded the Youngstown chapter of the Governor's Subcommittee for Barrier-Free Architecture in his quest to make all facilities accessible just one of his many successes. Dale Oliver, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Dale is an Army veteran who worked with guided missiles. Of note for him was that he actually saw the last launch of a German V-2 rocket. On a personal note, a blind date with a young lady named Betty worked out so well that he married her and they have lived in love for 63 years. Ruth Ralston, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Ruth and her husband were both longtime foster parents and received both national and international Foster Parents of the Year awards. They've been instrumental in working with families of murdered children, offering comfort and guidance through the depth of sorrow that these families go through. She's been such a blessing to so many. Robert Simon, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Bob says, as a volunteer for the chaplain's office at Trumbull Memorial Hospital, I visited a 90-year-old female patient who noticed my accent and asked where I was from. I told her Brooklyn, New York, she was from the Bronx. She told me she was a Yankee fan. I said I'm a Dodgers fan. In New York, those could have been fighting words. Instead, she told me to sit down, and we had a great conversation. Thank you. Ralph Smith, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Professional Excellence. Ralph has been a member of Kiwanis for 30 years and says that from mobile meal delivery to raising money for local charities, it has always kept him coming back. Thank you, sir. As a volunteer policeman at the OSU Special Olympics, he was privileged to meet John Glenn in 1974. He says it was truly an unexpected pleasure. Darlene St. George, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Professional Excellence. Darlene comments her life has been fulfilling as she has had the pleasure of working in early childhood education, which was rewarding before moving into government, providing opportunities and programs for seniors. 
She says that when working with children, you're making an impact on the future. With seniors, you're preserving history. Anita Stoddard, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Professional Excellence. An attitude change made a life-changing difference for Anita. She says, I was always turned off by sick elderly people until I took a group of junior high students to spend time at Omni Manor. They showed me what joy there was in interacting with the beautiful residents. I spent the, nine, the next nine years taking students and myself to visit them once a month. The outreach team at Living Lord Lutheran Church nominated for Outstanding Senior Advocates. I'd like to introduce the outreach committee. Sue Armstrong, Judy Schaefer, Sarah Staney, Norma and Warner Tacklett, Lynn Walters, Ruth Erke, who has since passed away, Rita Twixberry, Mary Ulam, Rhonda Leach, Pastor William Leach, and Chairwoman Donna Tompkins. The residents at Shepherd of the Valley Niles, a Lutheran senior living community, have been blessed for the last several years by this group. The love, care, compassion, enthusiasm, and really fun activities that they bring to the facility is contagious. They never look or act like they'd rather be anywhere but there, and they're appreciated by both the residents and staff alike. Reverend William Wilkins, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. As a parish pastor, Reverend Wilkins enjoyed visiting with seniors in and around Salem. He was instrumental in starting the banquet program there, feeding area seniors. He also enjoys working with the Alzheimer Network locally, aiding both patients and families as they work through day-to-day -day needs. Connie Young, nominated for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Connie's love of children has been ongoing throughout her life. She started in the 70s and 80s working with Girl Scouts. At this phase of life, she wanted to continue to influence kids, so she became a foster grandparent in a kindergarten class at McGuffey School in Warren. She volunteers there at least three days a week. Debbie Zader, nominated for Outstanding Senior Advocate. Debbie provides assistance to about 475 people a year, helping them navigate the insurance snarl that is Medicare Part D. She helps them apply for low income subsidy to lower premiums while connecting them with the ability to get medications to maintain their general health and well being. She believes that all deserve the time, respect, and support to help navigate the system. At this time, let us please give this truly deserving crowd a round of applause. We'll be recognizing three nominees with the Outstanding Senior Award in no particular order. Recipients are invited to say a few words. Today's first winner of the Valley Legacy Award does so in the category of Senior Advocate. This gentleman is dedicated to serving his community and is chairman of the Austintown Generational Enrichment Corporation that created the Austintown Senior Center. As its chairman, he led numerous fundraising campaigns, wrote grants, and provided countless hours of service to seniors through advisement and advocacy. The result of his action has been the provision of cutting edge equipment for exercise, social interaction, and facility enhancements. He has also spearheaded activities such as cooking meals for seniors, building access ramps to provide safe passage and home access through the Safe Passage program, as well as companionship opportunities for those who may not have anyone else. His efforts have helped ease mobility challenges and daily obstacles facing our area seniors. In addition, he works with seniors to help manage their properties and personal belongings and make sure they receive meals during the holidays when Meals on Wheels is not available. Through his efforts, 
The Mahoning Valley car crews came to Austin Town and made it possible to increase the number of seniors receiving services from the Senior Center by 200 new members. He has also advocated for the development of senior aged educational programs, partnering with YSU and the SCORE program, a group made up of mostly retired seniors who have chosen to give back to their community and who are positioned to provide meaningful work by mentoring small business owners and launching their companies. His nominator says, this man has an unparalleled passion for assisting seniors. He has earned my highest recommendation for consideration for the 2017 Outstanding Senior Advocate Award. Please join me in congratulating our first Valley Legacy winner of 2017, Mr. Mark Cole. Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much. I want to go ahead and start off by thanking Kay Lavelle for nominating me for this award and everything because it's a true honor, especially sharing it with my mom and dad and fiance Janet over here. But I want to thank all the other nominees because all of us working together as a team is what really makes this valley strong and help out all the seniors here. And it makes it a place for them to all call home. A mother, mother, oh boy, I'm nervous up here today. <laughs> so thank you very much. Our second Valley Legacy Award winner receives the award for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Nominated by four people in three individual nominations, this man has a lifetime of professional and volunteer service to the community. Following service in the Army during World War II, he became the advertising manager for 14 years at Youngstown Sheet and Tube, until he opened his own marketing firm, where he is credited with creating the current logo for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He also became an adjunct faculty member at YSU for 20 years, teaching marketing and advertising. Personally, he would say his greatest accomplishment is his loving family. He was married for 58 plus years until his wife's passing and has four children. Both he and his wife had an eye for community involvement. As members of St. John's Episcopal Church, they founded the Red Door Cafe, which has been serving weekly meals since Black Friday. They were honored by then Governor Bob Taft as joined hearts in giving outstanding volunteers from the Youngstown area. He has served faithfully as a volunteer, then an advisory board member for Help Network, formerly Help Hotline of Northeast Ohio. His work on their development committee has helped shape the direction of this organization. Habitat for Humanity has been a thread through his life, and at age 95, he continues his involvement, having recently received their Lifetime Achievement Award, his involvement includes facilitating numerous grant applications and helping to develop a three-year strategic plan. One of his nominators expressed a shared sentiment about him. His work to improve the lives of the people of this valley cannot be contained in one page or one application. It is an intentional life of integrity, self-sacrifice, and living out the principles of one's faith. Please join me in congratulating William Bill Farragher for our second Valley Legacy Award of 2017. Good afternoon. This is a real honor. Uh, I, I just can't uh, hardly tell you how wonderful it is uh, to be up here and, and to look out at all of you who help this community. Thank you so much. Thank 
Commission. Thank you. And Bill brought up a um, document that he was nominated. He and his wife were nominated in around 2006, one of the first nominees from then. So it was very sweet. Our third Valley Legacy Award winner also receives the award for Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Many people have a dream, but few people pursue that dream to its fruition with passion and determination. This nominee has done just that. He drove truck and worked in a steel mill to finance his education with the dream of becoming a teacher. He taught at Beaver Local High School in Lisbon from 1971 to 2000, incorporating his beloved field biology hobby into the regular curriculum where his dream began. In 2000, he took a new position with the Columbiana County Educational Service Center. It was here that his vision was born to open an education center where students and adults alike might come and learn more about their natural surrounding and the creatures that inhabit it. He was inspired to seek use of an old house that was already on the property of Beaver Creek State Park as a place of study. Once he got through all the red tape, the house was opened as the original education center and his extensive personal collection of mounts and skins was moved there in time for a 2001 opening. From there, he continued building his dream with the creation of the Beaver Creek Wildlife Education Center Volunteers Association in 2002. Volunteer numbers ranged from 29 up to 65 in 2011. In May of 2008, the center was awarded a grant for $300,000 for a new addition to the facility. He designed the new addition, acted as project manager, and designed and helped build the new displays. The new center opened in 2011. He co-wrote an application for a grant to add another new room, and the North American Wildlife Display opened in spring of this year. While he retired as a curator of the center at age 75, he still maintains involvement with the project. His nominator says, what was once his dream will outlive him as his legacy. Who could ask for more? Please join me in congratulating our third Valley Legacy Award winner, James Jim Kerr. Thank you very much. I appreciate this very much. And uh, it's been a great uh, time that I've had doing this. I picked up my first dead bird off the road in 1978 and have been collecting since. We are still looking for an Alaskan brown bear taxidermy mine if anybody out there has one. OK. So seriously, thank you very much. This is an honor for sure. Our fourth Valley Legacy Award winner, winner will receive his award in the category of Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. Some say we make plans and God laughs. This Valley Legacy Award winner could not have imagined how his life would change when he entered the Army as a second lieutenant in 1961. Serving two tours of combat in Vietnam, he was wounded by a Viet Cong mortar shell attack in 1966, losing both legs. He received numerous medals, including the Order of the Purple Heart and Bronze Star Medal, before being discharged as a major after 23 months spent at Walter Reed Hospital. He immediately went to Case Western Reserve Law School, receiving his Juris Doctorate in 1971, where he began his career and his service to help those with disabilities. His service to those who, like him, find difficulty in everyday life navigating unfriendly barriers to disabilities have included co-founding the Youngstown chapter of the Governor's Subcommittee for Barrier-Free Architecture, providing curb cuts in the city, and a ramp at the south door of the courthouse, a YSU Veteran Center, work with Chaffin Career Center, advisory committees for health systems of Eastern Ohio, 
Northeast Ohio Legal Services, City of Youngstown Fair Housing, Amputee Opportunities Foundation trustee. He has also sat on several state committees and services and has been recognized with the Ohio Governor's Community Service Award and the Easter Seal Society of Ohio Gallantry Award, just to name a few. He's also an inductee into the Rayan School Hall of Fame. His nominator states, he continues to be a major influence in the veterans and handicapped communities despite being retired and has accomplished much on their behalf. Our winner is attorney Carl Nunziato. He is not able to be here today. Accepting the award on his behalf is his nominator, attorney Charlene Burke. I certainly can't say thank you the same way Carl would, but I've known Carl for many, many years, and I know how proud he is of his military service and what he has done for the veterans in this community and for handicapped individuals. I'm sure he'd be very, very proud and would say thank you so much. Today's fifth Valley Legacy Award winner will receive his award in the category of Outstanding Senior for Professional Excellence. The first line of this nominee's entry reads, when some people reach the ripe age of 65 years, retirement is the only option. Instead, this nominee was thrust into the most difficult position of his life. After having very successful runs in helping guide the merger of Trumbull Memorial Hospital with Northside Hospital in 1998, he went out on his own, creating Catalyst Consultants, offering training and advice to businesses, private agencies, and local government on security matters. Then, one day, a member of the failing Trumbull County Scope Board contacted him and offered him a job that would have been daunting to anyone else, that of saving scope, without one cent of pay, too. And he took it and turned it all around, making the current scope into one of Trumbull County's most successful agencies. How did he do it? First, he negotiated financial options with county commissioners, the senior levy committee, vendors, and unemployment compensation bureau to keep the programs available to local seniors. Then he persuaded family and community service from Portage County to take the agency under their umbrella. Since 2013, SCOPE has never lost a program and has added benefits such as the traveling pantry that delivers food to poor homebound seniors by partnering with Second Harvest Food Bank and the Warren Family Mission. Initially, they served 70. Now, they serve 207. In 2012, SCOPE sites served 2,200 seniors per year. Now, they serve 4,000. The budget has gone from nothing but red to running in the black. Levies, grants, and generous donations have, them, have moved them back to vibrant viability thanks to this nominee. His nominator says thanks to him taking on this seemingly lost cause, Scope has been given new life. Roberta Graham, Scope's founder, would be so pleased in how they continue to make a difference for seniors. Please join me in congratulating our fifth Valley Legacy Award winner, Ralph Smith. I didn't expect to be standing here at this time at this moment. I didn't prepare anything. I'm in a lot of trouble again. Uh, I've said this many times since I started down at Scope five years ago, five and a half years ago. I retired last December. You don't do this alone. You don't, you don't take an agency's in that much trouble. We had uh, 22 employees, and uh, we now have 4,000 a year 
uh, of seniors that come to us for one type of service or another. I want to say that my staff was uh, incredible. And that was uh, Debbie Zorn and uh, Kim Haas, Dave Roche, and I could not have got through without them. And I thank you very much, and I also thank uh, uh, Zorna Haas for nominating me. Thank you. Our sixth Valley Legacy Award winner will receive his award in the category of Outstanding Senior for Community Achievement. It has been said of this winner that when you want to get things done, this man is the go-to person who you ask. Raised in Columbus, he was married in 1966 and blessed with three children. He's a 1965 graduate of Capital University and Trinity Seminary in 1968. He was the director at Camp Frederick in Rogers, Ohio for 11 years and worked part-time as a national staff member for outdoor ministries in the American Lutheran Church. Retired from the formal pastorate, he's also always available for the community at large. He is currently treasurer of the Banquet in Salem, which he originated in 2004 based on the organization model in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Four churches work together to provide meals every Monday and also on the fourth Thursday of the month for those in need. Forty businesses and organizations provide financial and donated items that support this effort. He has a varied yet focused volunteer life, helping those who are caught in the web of both alcohol and drug abuse, as well as those who may have mental health issues. He has given of his time and talents to the Tri-County Alcohol Board, the Counseling Center Board, the Columbiana County Mental Health and Recovery Services Board, and also filled a vacancy on the Columbiana School Board. He is the Community Relations Board Chairman at the Federal Prison in Elkton and ministers to inmates there. He also sits on the boards of Camp Frederick and their Endowment Board, the Salem Memorial Building Board as Chairman, and is Secretary to the Salem Health District Board. His nominator fondly comments of this winner, as much as I try to be involved in the community, he seems to always be involved more, and usually the one who has been placed in charge of getting things organized and carried through. Please join me in congratulating our sixth Valley Legacy Award winner, Reverend William Wilkins. just would like to say thank you. Uh, it's really an honor to be uh, part of uh, such an astute group of folks who serve in our communities, our three county areas. Uh, it is an honor for me to represent Columbiana County, and uh, it's been a pleasure uh, for me to be a part of a variety of organizations, but also the, <clears throat> the greatest pleasure is to also be connected with so many fine volunteers who give hours and hours of time uh, and, and service to our community. It is a, a pleasure to be a part of uh, such a wonderful group of folks. Thank you. Our final winner is a couple who will receive their Valley Legacy Award in the category of Outstanding Senior Advocate. This couple, through their family-owned publication, has provided area seniors and boomers with a vast amount of important information on both national and local topics of interest to help improve their lives. They are both compassionate and go above and beyond to help seniors. They have donated their time through helping plan, set up, and organize various senior fairs and events, and have also donated gift subscriptions to their newspaper, gift baskets, and gift cards to make the events more fun. 
They make sure to make current information available that affects seniors in the fields of health, human services, activities, and what's available in the Mahoning Valley regarding help and entertainment. They encourage local agencies and businesses to better understand the needs of the senior population and how those needs can best be met. They sit on the board of the Mahoning County Sheriff's Department Senior Service Fair and have spoken at club meetings, senior fairs, and events over the years, expressing concerns and problems that face area seniors. They've also visited many senior facilities in the Tri-County area, reading to the residents, discussing senior life problems, and dropping off papers to them. They are an information center via phone, fielding calls from seniors who have questions and concerns, Copies of their paper are provided to the audio journal to be read to the blind each month. This nominator says, I feel this couple is an outstanding example of what a senior advocate should be. They've worked tirelessly over the past 25 years to better the lives of our seniors here in the Mahoning Valley. Please join me in congratulating our final 2017 Valley Legacy Award winners, Mark and Trish Ludwig of the Senior News. Thank you very much. Um, anyone who knows us knows that I am the talk talkative one of the group. Poor Mark never gets a word in. So um, with that being said, I would like to uh, sincerely thank Shepherd of the Valley and the Legacy Valley Committee and board members for this. We are really humbled. And um, I also would like to thank Kay Lavelle for nominating us. Uh, Mark and I have worked with Kay over the years on various um, committees and projects, and she's one of the hardest working women I know, especially for seniors. Um, I also would like to thank our readers. That's why we do that. this. And I especially would like to thank my husband. Um, I married into this job just 10 years ago, but uh, he's done this for over 25 years, and it's his hard work and dedication uh, that make it all happen. So thank you, honey. Thankfully, my lovely wife usually has enough to say for both of us. So I'm kind of <laughs> off the hook here today, but um, the recognition is truly appreciated and we're deeply touched. Thank you. Congratulations again to all the nominees, recipients, sponsors, and to all of you to help making the Valley Legacy Awards another rousing success this year. We couldn't do it without all of you and your support. We thank you for spending the afternoon with us to celebrate the achievements of our nominees. Before we dismiss you this afternoon, we would like to ask you to consider nominating an outstanding senior or senior advocate for the 2018 Valley Legacy Awards. It's never too soon to start thinking. Nominations can be found on the Shepherd of the Valley website, and the committee will be accepting nominations until July 15th of 2018. There's so much talent, time, and service being given to the Mahoning Valley to make it a great place to live, and we want to make sure we're recognizing those who are serving us. Please keep an eye out for greatness, and let us know of any seniors leaving a legacy we need to recognize. Thank you for your consideration. Again, thanks to all of you for attending the 2017 Valley Legacy Awards. It was such a joy to have you all with us. Have a wonderful day.